All right. I think we're live. Push one in the chat if you can hear me. Hey, thank you for that confirmation. Welcome back to the Black Brain Trust. This is episode 591, Space and Technology. Please hit the like button as you come in, share the video if possible, and hit that notification bell so you get all the updates from the Black Brain Trust, including those posted on the community tab. There's a document in the description the video for you to follow along with. If you want to engage in this discussion, there'll be a link in the chat for you to click on. When you click on the link, make sure you raise your hand so that one of us can acknowledge you in advance to the panel. All right, let me uh, drop this link. Let me drop the link. All right, let me share my screen and let's get started. Um, I'm not gonna wait any longer. <clears throat> All right, so first item on the docket is from CGTN. Uh, pandemic speeds up robotic food automation. We've been talking about this. Let's, let's go through this. then it's definitely coming and COVID's going to accelerate it. Again, because people are concerned with human beings being involved with their food and the spread of disease. So if you can eliminate human beings from the equation in some way, shape or form and replace them with robots, people tend to feel safer. proposition kind of works, but I'm still skeptical that they'll be very successful. And if they are, they'll be successful during the pandemic, but will go away just as quickly as they popped up. Yeah, so we've been talking about this um, for months, okay? There was a McKinsey report that talked about this last year um, that gave a whole entire deep analysis on the impact of automation and robots and robotics on black people, more importantly, black men. Um, and so what you're seeing now, like the, um, the person in the, in, in the uh, clip said, uh, COVID is going to accelerate automation and robotics in, in the food, food industry. And so, What's happening now is, you know, these um, this lockdown has forced a lot of companies to step it up. Okay, you have what since March, April, May, June, July. By the time this is all said and done, you're going to see a lot of jobs that are not coming back. I would say at least five percent of the jobs are not going to come back. Okay, 
I'm, I'm, I'm being gracious with the number five. Um, five percent of those jobs are not coming back because um, acceleration in in, um, in automation and robotics. Okay, this is serious business. This isn't something to play around with. We were talking about this on this channel for the last couple of years that automation was going to come in. Uh, BGS Black Gnostic Speak. He talked about this um, many a times that automation was coming, and a lot of black people were like, "This isn't going to do anything to us." It won't impact us. And now you see these robots on screen basically doing the boogaloo, um, making all your food, and you don't have to have a human there only to replenish the food that's there. But that's the extent of it. Okay. You spend maybe five or 10 minutes replenishing the food, and that's it. The fact that they can make pizza um, it, 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 it speaks volumes because you can make pizza now with lasers. Okay. You can cook pizza with lasers. So you imagine that um, a, a laser can can cook a whole entire pizza in just a few a few seconds. Um, well, I shouldn't say a few seconds, maybe maybe two minutes or so. Uh, before that was never the case. You would have to have somebody flip it and do all these other things to make a pizza. You know, uh, these are all fast food staples that people eat every day. Um, and so, no workman's compensation, no. Um, yeah, the CEO of Chalbotics. No, no, no uh, vacations, no healthcare coverage, no nothing that needed. They don't need to take a vacation or anything. So this is where we are right now. It's only 2020. You imagine what this is going to be like in 2025. Okay, a new president will be in place then, and you know things will change drastically. And I don't think a lot of Black people are prepared for this. But we have tech talks and we have these space and technology live streams for a reason. Um, to keep people in the know so no one can ever, you know, come back and say, oh, well, you know, no one told me um, about um, automation coming in. But in reality, we did talk about automation. We talked about it ad nauseum. And here we are talking about it again uh, in the food industry. And what you have is a lot of uh, people who are just in denial. They think that um, it's not going to impact them or it, it, <laughs> they think they're invincible. And so you go ahead and think you're invincible, but we know the truth now. Um, the truth is that, uh, you know, uh, your job your job is on the line. So. All right. Um, all right, so next item on the dock is from TechCrunch from uh, from farm to phone, a paradigm shift in grocery, speaking of food. In the blink of an eye, millennials, moms, and grandparents alike have abandoned the, uh, the decades uh, old practice of wandering uh, dusty grocery aisles for the convenient and novel use of online grocery. While Instacart, uh, Amazon Fresh, and others have been offering an alternative to brick and mortar grocery for years, it is the pandemic that has classified them as an essential business and more than ever uh, afforded them a clear competitive advantage. But these past couple of months have not only have not have seen not only drastic changes in consumer behavior, but also fundamental shifts in business models adopted by grocers uh, worldwide. These shifts are not temporary. Indeed, they are here to stay. Corona catalyzed and permanent. For the consumer, online grocery generally uh, online grocery generally starts and ends the same way. They place their order on an app or a website, and hours later it shows up at the door. But the ways these orders are being fulfilled run the gamut. The most widely known approach comes from Instacart, which relies on hundreds of thousands of human shoppers fulfilling customers' uh, online uh, grocery orders by sh uh, shopping side by side with regular brick and mortar customers. The model clearly works for Instacart, which is valued at nearly $14 billion after its latest raise. However, this model is far from ideal. Even pre-COVID, shoppers were known to crowd, uh, uh, crowd out regular customers, not to mention introduce high delivery costs and the element of human error to the fulfillment process. One obvious solution has become the Central Fulfillment Center, or CFC, CFCs are large standalone warehouses often serving distinct ge geographies that can supply both brick and mortar stores and online grocery deliveries. 
As order volumes raise in, uh, rise and consumers demand faster and faster delivery times, innovation has already been infused into the CFC model. Some grocers, notably Kroger, believe that introducing robotic automation into CFCs via solutions such as Ocado can create economies of scale for fulfillment. These CFCs deploy fulfillment robots controlled by air traffic control tech that run along a grid system and move goods via categorized crates. Kroger has continued its, uh, continued its investment in the model, recently announcing three new Ocado automated CFCs in the West, Pacific uh, Northwest and Great Lakes regions of the United States. The smallest location is over 150,000 square feet. While Kroger remains uniquely attached to the CFC model, Albertson, Safeway, Walmart, and many others prefer the Micro Fulfillment Center, MFC. MFC is typically far smaller in size, think 10,000 square feet. Our automated warehouses carved out of the back of existing stores that drive uh, faster fulfillment times in smaller geographic areas, allowing chain stores to use their numerous geographic locations to act as effective fulfillment delivery hubs for e-grocery uh, coverage. MFCs uh, are full of, uh, are all the rage in brick and mortar right now and the market for them is expected to quadruple in the next two, uh, two years, 26 billion to 113 billion dollars. MFCs are at a low cost fulfillment and delivery front, avoiding both the labor costs of crowdsource shopping and the shipping costs of distant central fulfillment centers. Thus, when compared to the other types of fulfillment, MFCs have markedly lowered uh, lower overall costs. MFC providers claim to be the only gross margin positive option for e-grocery. Uh, so I'm not gonna go over all of this because we don't have a whole lot of time, um, but grocery technology based on automation, based on um, robotics, this is where we are right now. Hey, Nicole Ali, how are you doing? Um, peace to you as well. Yeah, you're right about that. Uh, she says uh, TechCrunch has been on lately, been on it lately. Bio, bio printing food is becoming more feasible. Yeah. Yeah. Th this is, um, this is where we are right now. You know, you got restaurants going automation. You know, a lot of brothers used to flip burgers coming out of jail, or coming out of high school. Now that's not the case anymore. Okay, robots are fulfilling those jobs. And then you have, you know, these uh, micro fulfillment centers and central fulfillment centers that are actually um, uh, automated now. Okay, so you have a bunch of people just running around with with, with uh, uh, um, carts that <laughs> to fulfill people's orders that's all you're going to be here doing how long is that going to last for before they automate that process okay at some point that process is going to be automated too i say probably by 2025 you'll probably see that go away i mean for right now um the the human labor is actually uh quite cost effective but once once the uh, ability to automate that process comes into place and you weigh the cost of the automation versus the labor cost of the human resource, you start to see that those jobs will go away too, eventually, okay? But we've been talking about this for the last couple of years. And, and like I said, there's been people who have pushed back and said, you know, ain't no robot gonna replace me. You know, I'm, I'm the alpha male in the hood, you know? You know, my, my game, my mouthpiece is crisp, you know, all this other stuff, you know? I, I, I feel sorry for you, you know, for you if you're not really invested into um, upskilling yourself in this new global economy, especially during the pandemic. Okay, especially during the pandemic, this is serious business. No, no one is safe out here. No one is safe out here. All right, next item on the docket is from Electrek.co. Yamaha Savante announced as New 28 mile per hour class three electric road bike in the US. This is actually pretty nifty looking. Um, hmm. Yeah, I, I, I do like it, I have to say so myself. 
The Yamaha Samante is the latest addition to Yamaha's fitness-oriented line of electric road bikes. While some of the while some e-bike motor manufacturers are for only motors or e-bike component systems, Yamaha has actually been building entire e-bikes since 1993, when they were the first company to enter the modern e-bike market. Now the company has unveiled a brand new electric road bike that pushes the envelope of performance compared to the other e-bikes Yamaha has created to date. The new Yamaha Zavante features a drop bar design with an aluminum frame and fork that provides any internal cable routing uh, for clear, cleaner appearance. Yeah, I have to I have to agree. This is actually a pretty good looking bike. Um, I'm a bike person myself. Um, I'm in need of a new bike right now, but uh, this is definitely um, very clean looking. You can't really tell um, unless you're looking for that battery. That battery, I thought it was just a water bottle, but you know, The bike is powered by the Yamaha PW Series SE mid-drive motor. The Yamaha PW Series SE uses a triple sensor system, including a torque sensor, bicycle speed sensor, and crank cadence sensor. The results, uh, this results in uh, ultra smooth pedal assist performance that can apply the proper amount of torque and power at the, pro at the proper time. So this bike features a, 500 uh, watt an hour Yamaha battery, which is around to twice the capacity compared to other electric road bikes. The battery can be charged either on or off the bike and comes with Yamaha's quick charger that can replenish the battery from zero to 80% in one hour. That's actually pretty good. This is actually really good. This is a nice bike. Uh, I have to be honest, man. Um, I'm a sucker for bikes because um, I live in the city, but um, Yeah, I like this picture right here. That, that just uh, kind of sells sells the deal for me, or seals the deal for me. Um, like I said, I live in a city, so uh, these things do apply to me. So yeah, that's that's where we are right now. Micro transportation, um, in terms of like e-bikes and stuff like that. Complex Design has talked about micro transportation for a while now on his channel. Um, how this is going to be an emerging market. Yeah, anybody can click on the Zoom link. Um, Nicole Ali. And so, yeah, uh, Complex Design has talked about uh, micro transportation for a while now, and a lot of people have not really um, taken this part serious. This is a growing market. Bird scooters, okay was rated at two, two plus billion dollar value, market valuation, okay? They're a startup, okay? They went, they went live, I think in 2017, two billion dollars in 36 months. You do the math, okay? There's a lot of money in this market right now. Complex has been talking about this for a while, okay? He's been talking about this for a while. Yeah, Black Torch, at 3400 it is expensive. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know why it's always so expensive like that. Um, I, I assume that they um, they know that demographic. I mean, $3,400, you could buy a used car for that kind of money. Uh, it, it's really strange that they price these uh, bikes at that um, level. I still want it, though. <laughs> All right, we got Black Torch on the panel as well as uh, Miss Nicole Ali. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. A little tired, but uh, yeah, I'm enjoying your stream. <laughs> Thank you. As always, it's good. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have anything you want to add? Uh, well, I was reading um, TechCrunch. They were talking about the bioprinting, so the 3D printing of the food. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I don't know if you, I just saw the food <laughs> and I was mm -hmm. like, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's where with what you were talking about with distribution, right? Yep. Um, but with manufacturing the food using, um, uh, maybe I'll just do a video, but the chicken cells and KFC. So it's a uh, beyond fried chicken is the brand 
mm-hmm. that they want to come out with where they're uh, 3D, basically 3D printing the chicken, the fried chicken. Now, what do you think that's going to do to the farmers? I mean, the farmers who grow this chicken to, right. to ship, I mean, it could put them out of business, right? It could definitely put them out of business, but this is a, um, a cheaper way of production. Mm-hmm. It's also um, better in terms of quality control and management. So I think that's why Russia has been talking about that. They're really big on that. Yeah. Um, so that's why I think like it just makes more sense going into the future. If you want to prevent, you know, keep down diseases since we're in a pandemic right mm-hmm. now, um, they're thinking into the future as far as like bird flu. Of course, this could translate easily into pork, swine flu, you know, more yeah, prevention man. than anything else. Yep, mad cow disease. And so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so they're moving up the, to me, based on what I've seen and reading and everything, um, they're just moving up the chain of, of animals going from the animals that people eat mostly worldwide. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the issue is going to be like switching into plants and maintaining long-term shelf life uh, with plants, for instance, because you, you know, you have animals that you're, pr- the meat that you're printing, um, but it's just going to be meat. Like I, the farmers, I don't know what they're going to do. Even farmers that are harvesting like wheat or rice or grains and stuff i don't know because this is the end product right this is not like printing a well i guess they could print a chicken but this is you know it's printing Mm -hmm. um the end product of that animal so i don't know it's interesting though yeah i I can only go go ahead black torch well they still need the active ingredients to do it even if they start with cells you still need um some ingredients that mixture to come up with your so-called secret sauce and right. there's all and there's also well, there may be a problem um which we don't know about long-term effects of of generating um cell cultured meat we don't know the long-term ramifications of that and how it will affect the the human genome or the That's bacteria true. that we that that we remember we're more bacteria than we are uh, genes. So mm-hmm. we don't know the long-term effects of having, um, of eating these things and how it would affect the bacteria that support our lifestyle and, and our, our living. Immune system, yeah. yeah so, most, of the, most of the immune system is in the gut, you're right. The mm-hmm. uh, GI tract, the biome is there, you know, gastrointestinal tract. So uh, yeah, you're right because those, um, you're putting a, a new type of food into your system that you, you've never experienced before. Um, but yeah, I thought I just thought it was interesting because uh, to me, it seems like they're somewhat desperate. Um, and they're also anticipating, you know, you have to plan ahead, anticipate a food sor- shortage or uh, lower quality food. You have to be able to mitigate that before it happens, you know, and the effects of of what you're talking about that opens up another market you know that's another job for someone to do to figure that out all right and that's all i'm saying it's every time there's an opportunity there's also downsides to all these right. things and um and the biggest thing because i can't stress this enough we're finding out they're doing a project now well it's been doing it for a while like the genome project, but this one is called the bacterial project, where they they catalyze all the bacteria that's in the human body, which is kind of like really hard because depending on what areas of the world you are, you got different bacteria. So it's mm-hmm. um, it, it, it's going to be. Um, I wouldn't be celebrating until I figure out if this yeah, thing I'm, is gonna is this thing is gonna kill us or it's gonna have some real long term effects against us. That's all. Right. I I agree with you. I'm not. I'm not. I hope I didn't come off that way. I'm not celebrating it. It's just the fact that um, it's something to be aware of because uh, it goes into policy as far as labeling. You remember we had the they had the discussion years ago about GMO labeling. Mm-hmm. and how that we still don't have GMO labeling here in the United States. So are they well, going to do, do but they do, the, but the farmers didn't want it, remember? So the farmers, they, they wanted to be able to say that it's it's anything they want to say. 
See, mm-hmm. it, it, that's the problem. That uh, goes back to Mike's question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mike, this is a big unknown. I, I tell you like this. I wouldn't be running to eat uh, things that I'm not sure that my, uh, my stomach can handle. I'm, I'm... Well, that doesn't stop a lot of black people from eating them chicken. <laughs> but they know that. They they, but, that's been, but that's been... Uh, okay. Let me exp- Okay. What mm-hmm. I'm talking about is that this is stuff that bacteria that it knows how to eat those things. It knows how to digest these things. Mm-hmm. Now, you introduce cell culture things that's not existing. In, well, I can't say not existing, but maybe um, um, a, kamara, a kamora of different things mm-hmm. to come to, mm-hmm. come together. You mm-hmm. don't know what it's going to do inside the human body. Yeah. I mean, well, they've, they've looked at um, chimeric uh, genetic uh, polymorphisms. They've done all types of mutations on... Um, different things and, and then done it in reverse. They've looked at how those uh, changes in the food will affect different organs. And then they've made those changes in the organs of the animals and looked at it the other way. And so they they have a good grasp on what effect that could have on humans as far as colon cancer. A lot of people are moving towards ketogenic diet or a vegan diet. And so that they're, they've looked at that. They're doing. There's lots of studies that are looking at um, what its effects on um, mice and rats, even in primates. They're very expensive studies, but they're being done. Mm-hmm. So I don't. I don't think that they, um, you know, don't know what they're, they're not. They're not just shooting in the dark, you know, so to speak. They, oh no, I, I'm. I'm in that. In, I'm in. I'm, I, I can't tell you exactly what I do, but I'm in. Um, uh, I blur the line between. IT and, and biotech. So um, okay. it, it's, um, I'm not saying they're not doing it, but I've seen uh, things where they thought they had everything locked down and then yeah. they didn't, and then something, because cause the the human body is so complex with all these different things that we're still finding out new organs that we didn't have before, that we never knew that we had, or new or new functions of, of, of things that we did, and, and new body parts that's doing things that we didn't know that we were doing before. So it's, and we, and we think we had it locked down. So I, I don't, I'm, I'm just, the op, I'm just being, not pessimist, but I'm just, I'm just looking at anything with a skeptical eye right now. Yeah, because, just analyzing. That yeah, because sense. we're running, we're running headlong towards this thing. It's not like, okay, I'll give an example. We we got vertical farming that's going to be, because this mm-hmm. whole thing is saying we're going to come to do, um, uh, what is it called, food shortages and things like that. So there's vertical farming, there's guys doing fish farming, they're doing all these kind of things to to work with that. And they're using um, uh, animals, other animals and aquaculture so that the fish poop feeds the plants and then that whole holistic circle that happens. So mm-hmm. this is, a, I, I just think that right now, um, we, we, I hope I hope that we 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 we're we're looking at things and before we jump into <laughs> jump into the water. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. I didn't mean to uh, come and take over or anything. No, or no, no, that's fine. Misdirect everything. I apologize for that. No, 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 yeah. no, no. It's fine. It's fine. We we do this all the time. Uh, let me yeah, just jump. Especially with me, so I'll shut up. <laughs> oh, what's yeah, your me. name? Black Torch. Yes. Okay. Good to meet you. I'm Nicole. All right, Nicole. All right, let me jump to this next one uh, from TechCrunch again. Uh, Aurora expands Texas in a bid to ramp up self-driving truck efforts. Uh, we've been talking about Aurora for a while, as well as um, Waymo and the rest of these, um, T- Too Simple and the rest of these uh, automated truck companies. So uh, here they are. Um, mm-hmm. Aurora, the, auto- the autonomous vehicle technology startup backed by Amazon, is expanding into Texas as it aims to accelerate the development of self-driving trucks. The company said it plans to test commercial routes in the Dallas-Fort Worth area with a mix of Fiat, Chrysler, Pacifica minivans and Class 8 trucks. A small fleet of Pacificas will arrive first. The trucks will be on the road in Texas by the end of the year, according to the company. Aurora's Texas office, which will staff about two dozen people, will be mostly comprised of new hires. Aurora said it's hiring of uh, for a variety of roles, including technicians, team leads, uh, truck drivers, and vehicle operators. And so, 
I think Ty City has talked about this for a while now because uh, he works in this part of the trucking industry. Um, he was working, um, I think, with Qualcomm or something like that, collecting a lot of the data off the trucks and then set, uh, uh, sending it out. Um, and so he he he's been. I mean, he's in the DFW, so he's been talking about this uh, for a while now. Um, okay. I'm surprised. Go ahead. No, I was just saying. Okay, that's um, yeah, that's interesting. I, I've been hearing a lot about this. Uh, they're moving into this this field now, more and more. I I didn't know of Aurora as the the company, but now that I see they're backed by Amazon, it, it's starting to make more sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, transportation just in in general changing. Yeah, because Amazon has these fulfillment warehouses and whatnot that needs to ship um, pallets and whatnot, um, heavy right. loads. Um, mm -hmm. They're looking at their best interest, but at the same time, developing the technology. Um, you could say the same thing about Google or Waymo. Um, Apple just bought uh, Zooks, I think it was. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're all looking at this. Uh, I don't know what Apple is going to be doing with it, but... Um, you know, Amazon, Google, all makes sense. You know, um, Too Simple said that they will have autonomous trucks uh, crisscrossing the lower part of the United States by 2022. This is mm -hmm. serious business for a lot of people who are in the trucking industry. Uh, if you have a truck that's automated <laughs> that can basically go across country by itself and take that load, uh, what does that say for you? Um, yeah. Well, it opens up, like I said, it opens up the field of um, vehicle security because before you used to hijack a truck, you had witnesses. Mm -hmm. Now, if you take over that truck uh, from, um, from since it's going to be running in an IoT environment, so if you take over that truck, uh, who's the witness to say that, whether, you know, you just hijack trucks now and you don't have to worry about it. You could have it go redirect the GSP uh, locator and all this. So it just opens up a whole new. Are, are you, mean, you mean, you mean cyber hack the truck? Yep. Because they do it to cars all the time. Well, you know, if you go to black hat, uh, well, yep. last year, you don't, it ain't going to be wild for, you know, in the year before they were always hacking cars, taking over the GPS systems. And it's, it's, it's not that hard. So. Yeah, but I think I think those states, those those uh, consumer vehicles, are a little bit different than the commercial, right? So they would have to comply with a lot of federal standards and whatnot. And um, there is no federal standard for this yet. That's the problem. You mean for government? It, uh, the 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 there is no okay. There is no security standard for trucks in the IoT environment because they they just they haven't been doing anything about these things. Well, there, there, there is, um, there, there is, is something on the table now. Oh, yes, state, I agree with that. They're on the yeah, table. State, yeah, state for state. Yeah, the, the California. That's why they can't. That's why it has to be a driver inside the, uh, yeah, uh, inside the vehicle because they, they can't just allow a vehicle to go autonomous without, you know, because of all, all sorts of uh, safety regulations that the, the has to abide by. If it's a level five vehicle, there's going to be level five um, sort of security safety measures in place, especially from the state itself. And so, what I'm saying here is, you, I, what happened at Black Hat won't happen to these vehicles, uh, in in the sense that. It, you know, they just hacked the vehicle and then took it over. These vehicles will be completely different, especially if they're talking about using blockchain, controlling it remotely. Um, well, yeah, well, I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. You said that if they use blockchain, blockchain is based on hashing. Hashing, mm -hmm. what happens to hashing if quantum computing comes out? All those hashing block, all those things become vulnerable. Yeah, so who, uh, who's using who's using the quantum computer to hack? No, I'm just giving you example. Okay. I'm just giving an example of what's <laughs> see. Of, of we have multiple technologies that's happening at rapidly at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know, it only takes uh, 1,500 cycles for you you to crack most of the um, the uh, the the hashing functions. So okay. um, I, I I'm just I'm just I'm looking also at quantum computing because that's part of my uh, things I have to look at. And mm -hmm. I'm looking at what is going to affect is going to do to all these other technologies that's riding. Blockchain happens to be one of the major ones it may affect. 
that's all. I don't mean to cut you. you I'm know. thinking that the the man is gonna, um, I think, um, determine like what direction they're going in as far as developing policy and then mm -hmm. executing, you know, implementing that policy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because you know, the man is like going to drive everything. You know. Mm -hmm. No, no, absolutely. Because what's going to happen is they don't want to fall behind China. The United States doesn't want to fall behind exactly. China in that regard because they don't want to have to follow China's standards. If whoever reaches the milestone first will write mm -hmm. the uh, global standards for it. And right. they, the United States doesn't want to take <laughs> any standards from, uh, from China for that matter. And so that's why I'm saying um, at some point that, you know, the idea of it being hacked, that's, that's, that, won't, that won't be tolerated. Uh, the first time a vehicle <laughs> like that gets hacked, um, and you have to shut down all vehicles, and it, it, that that's that's not going to be acceptable. Um, yeah. It would defeat the purpose of developing it and having the engineers and everything, everyone work on it. So there's there's groups of people that's their job to yeah. purposefully try to hack externally, internally, and whatnot. You know, yeah. at all times while they're being tested. If if I mean these these trucks are, you know, insanely expensive. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, once they're out there, they're not going to invest that much money into something that doesn't work. It defeats the purpose, mm -hmm. you know, like the 5g towers, they put so much money into those towers and just put them there. And they sat for a good while before being turned on and activated there. If, 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 if the signal coming from that and that's transmitted is not consistent or has some type of security issue, it defeats the purpose of someone going to school to learn how to build it, put it together and, you know, execute whatever activity is necessary. Like they're just not going to do that. Nicole, so, have you ever been in the military? No. Okay. The, the, all right. So I, what I'm going to say with it, take this, we have plenty of systems with a built that have huge security holes, tons of them, tons of them. Yep. Uh, and, and I mean, uh, we, we discuss them here, some you can't discuss without guys coming to visit you, but there's a, it, it, there's a, so I, I take things from the other side because that's primarily, I look at things that what can go wrong. Mm -hmm. So, so, and I'm just, I'm just, and that's what they pay me to do. So I look at things and come up with these, um, what you call attacks against things. And, and that's what we look at. So I'm just saying that it doesn't matter. The more expensive the system is, the more times the vulnerabilities are there. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah, I, I think when, I think when we talk about, you know, um, vulnerabilities in, in these vehicles, um, th these vehicles uh, would have to pass, you know, um, some form of safety regulation because it's not the same like uh, having a um, uh, uh, a seat belt and an airbag and anti lock brakes and, and emissions test. There's right. going to be vigorous, you know, rigorous uh, sort of testing, you know, to ensure that this thing is not easily knocked offline uh, or else it just won't come on. So I'm a part of the IoT um, the IoT development community here here locally, and this is sort of stuff that we do talk about. Mm -hmm. um, we've been, you know, we sat down with Black & Decker, Stanley Black & Decker, um, quite a few companies here, and they talk about IoT security on a monthly basis. And the idea that um, a vehicle of this, uh, of this mass would actually just be so easily compromised. Um, oh, I just said it was easy. I never said no, that. I'm saying, I'm saying from, from just from an over, overall perspective that a vehicle like this would just be hijacked, you know, um, right. that, that, that won't, that won't be tolerated within the community. Uh, they, I, I agree that eyes, it won't be there's too many eyes watching the development of IOT yeah. in, in, in autonomous vehicles. Yeah. Right. But you do remember, we always find what day zero attacks. There's always, because it's based on software it, it, and there's also hardware attacks. So there's, like I said, I don't want to get into a technical discussion. I'm just saying, I just look at these things as, new areas that keeps me employed that's all mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah and you know a lot of these areas keep a, a lot of people employed including myself <laughs> that's what, but, um, you know yeah that's, we need that's, um equipment we need vehicles like this to transport a lot of the 
reagents like chemicals that we need like certain radio uh, radioactive um, isotopes that or not even the isotopes but the actual canisters that would hold the isotopes and different things like we need it is better to have vehicles that where no one is you know in the vehicle to transport like large amounts of different things that we need just transporting something simple like you know mice that are specifically engineered in some kind of way we we need that um for whatever project we're doing so yeah I, I agree I'm listening to to both of you I'm, I'm learning um I'm just I was just looking at it from like one perspective but yeah that what you're saying makes a lot of sense yeah and and you know we kind of look at this stuff um security is the big thing about it because that's what it's called the IOT security summit mm -hmm. and that's that's the sort of stuff that we do look for um but the thing is um there's no real standardization as of yet because no one can really, the, the, the more security you put in IoT, the harder it is to develop the device itself. And so that's why a lot of the devices get shipped out with basically no security at all. But if you're handling sensitive information in the United States, by law, you have to actually protect that information and you actually have to protect the ability of that device from being compromised. And so yeah. a lot of these devices that are being shipped from China and, and or even being developed here, are really out of step with um, a lot of the uh, new uh, uh, data privacy laws, like in California, CCP, uh, yeah, the GPR, consumer, yeah, GDPR, GDPR yeah. In, in Europe, and here we have Massachusetts yeah. data protection regulation, same thing in New York mm -hmm. um, and New Jersey. And so if, if you have a, a vehicle that has all the sensitive information on it and has the ability of being hacked, you're, you can go out of business. What happened when Equifax got hacked you know, the state of Massachusetts charged them up fifty thousand dollars per record. They lost a million. They lost one hundred and forty-three million records. Wow. Yeah, but you know that was a that was one of those oligarchies because it's only three of them. <laughs> so they, you know, they 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 just share the absorb the loss and then they move forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but reputation. Right. Yeah, but, you don't want to yeah ruin a reputation, and you also want to um i think i understand what mike's saying is that you want to be first when it comes to developing that um regulation mm -hmm. I, I agree but the equifax is not the first line consumer company mm -hmm. now i i would agree if that was like say um uh gillette or what's the name with a cons consumers directly buy yes. that but but equifax is is that second layer of things where the companies have a relationship with them. And we just tangentially, when we do a credit card and we do any kind of transaction, we, we, we sign a way uh, that we will pass this data to these people and these the credit agencies, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I'm just I'm just saying I've, I've looked at this scheme, you know, because mm -hmm. I have to do uh, a lot of this work. And it's um, it's amazing how how your data gets sent, not only across America, but out the country. It's just amazing. Yep. Wow. Yep. Let me jump to this next item on a docket from Engadget. UAE successfully launches its Hope Probe on a mission to Mars. Hmm. He jabs in space. The UAE's Mars-bound Hope mission has successfully launched from Japan's uh, uh, Tanegashima uh, Space Center uh, abroad a Mitsubishi H-2A rocket. About an hour after liftoff, the Hope probe separated from the rocket to rapturous applause from controllers and engineers at the UAE Space Agency. It's designed to jumpstart the nation's science sector and marks the Arab world's first ever mission to Mars. This is the future of the UAE, said science lead and minister of advanced sciences, Sarah Al-Amiri. Yeah, this is, um, for any country or any nation state or any group of people that are trying to, you know, create a great achievement, um, putting something on the moon or Mars, or even just putting a satellite into space um, for the first time actually brings a lot of pride to people. Um, yeah. I relate this to black people because we don't have any real major achievements that we can look to and say, 
yeah, this makes me feel good. Yeah, we did this first. So it's something like, I mean, yeah, you had BLM protesting and rainbow flags and stuff, but that's not the same. Um, I think what happens here is we don't really have anything of notoriety that we can we can really hold for ourselves. And I see things like this going on, um, you know, uh, UAE and um, uh, what, what's the other country? Um, Iran, North Korea, they have yeah. things they can, they, can, they can take pride in, in terms of like launching things into space and getting things off the ground. We don't really have anything like that. Um, yeah. And so we look at these sort of things and we've been talking about this on here. That's why we even have Space and Technology Hangout um, because a couple of years ago, I was at the Science Museum and I happened to just be wandering around and I saw this exhibit um, for the James Webb Telescope. Uh, when it was first uh, being uh, introduced. And um, I went into the, um, the uh, what do you call it? The um, observatory. The, I, I don't know if it's not an observatory. It's, it's this kind of stadium seating that kind of flips you upside down like you're inside of a spaceship and, you, and they have the thing. Oh, the, 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 oh that's the, um, the planetarium. Planetarium, yeah. Yeah, 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 planetarium. So I was in there and I was watching it. <laughs> I was watching it and I saw so many black, the credits rolled and I saw so many black people work, who worked on this um, telescope. Um, and I was mm -hmm. like, you would never know this unless you actually came to this exhibit. You, mm -hmm. I, like, I had no idea that many black people worked at NASA. And so I'm looking at this and I'm like, we need to stop talking more about this, right? There needs to be more emphasis put on this, but we had a debate last year and even a few months ago that space doesn't exist. There's no such thing as satellites. No. Such thing as the moon. Negroes in the manosphere were arguing this. Okay. <laughs> well, guys, oh, well, you know, we, okay. the hologram. we have a mm. contingent. They call themselves black conservatives and black, uh, what is it, the truthers that they don't believe in vaccines. They don't believe yeah. in the whole gambit. And I, yeah. and, and I just say, um, I, I, I think I think that we need to just move on and let these guys go the way of Darwin, Darwinian. Mm -hmm. We just need to uh, forget them. They are acceptable loss because if you if you if you don't move with progress, you will be left behind. And yeah. that was the problem with black people when we saw the Europeans came to Africa. We should have did like the Japanese. Look look from them. Look how their guns operated. Had some guys go in the back and figure it out, and then mass produce your mass produce your guns and cannons. But we didn't yeah. do that, so I, I'm saying we got to science our way out of this one. Nicole, yeah, I'm sorry. I think it's um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I think it's funny. I I'm gonna go soon, but I yeah, you're right. There needs to be more emphasis on science and, and technology, I would hope that people would watch um, your streams and, you know, content that's related um, and see, okay, is this a, for me watching your streams, it's like, these are companies I can look into to invest in mm -hmm. um, and just read like Negroes don't like to read. <laughs> and that's, that's, I'm going to say that and I'm going to keep saying that. And I'm like, if you just read just an hour a day, you and your your loved ones, you know what I'm saying? Like those old commercials. Uh, just just 25 cents a day. You know, like that's how I feel. <laughs> just, just just 25 minutes a day. You know what I'm saying? Like you and, and your child or whoever, your loved ones, you'd be surprised. Like I agree because we went to the Griffith Observatory. And well, we can't go now, but I've been there so many times and we mm -hmm. would go to the same little show and we had the same experience you did. They wrote those credits and I was like, really? Yeah. And you know, some of the names I was like, okay, I know that's a black woman. Like I just, I just knew. Yeah. And I was like, wow, you know, I was same, same response. And yeah. I felt the same way, like, oh my gosh, maybe the kids don't know, you know, they don't know this, they're not teaching it. And the schools are right here in LA, you know, but at the same time, you know, like I said, if you read and read things that you are not interested in, start that, that that's, that's a good place to start things that you are just like, ugh, like almost allergic to, 
try, you know, venturing out into the unknown, so to speak. And you never know where you're going to end up. I know that sounds cliche, but you really never know what you're going to end up learning Mm -hmm. and what that really will mean for you, you know, for your life. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, um, you know, SpaceX was probably 30 to $50 billion, maybe even a hundred billion dollars in valuation back then and in investment and whatnot. Today, you can probably launch a space startup for probably just about a million dollars just going in. Okay, this is this is a doable task now. And we've mm-hmm. been talking about this for a while. NASA put the blueprints for cubes, cube-based satellites on their website. All you gotta do is just download it and 3D print it. Um, wow. Yeah. There's a lot of opportunity that comes out of this. A, a satellite will probably cost you about, a cube-based satellite will probably cost you a thousand bucks. And so this is where we are right now. And, um, you know, I try, I, we try to do these live streams to actually, in, you know, um, engage people on, on a different level. Um, yeah. that there is a possibility and an uh, opportunity out there. So, but thank you, Nicole, for stopping through. No problem. Y'all have a good evening. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Good night. All right. Good night. Bye. Good night. All right. All right. This is from TechCrunch. Astra completes rocket 3.1 static test fire ahead of launch attempt. After a few setbacks exacerbated by the ongoing COVID-19 situation, another small rocket launcher is ready to demonstrate their ability to launch a vehicle to space. Astra has just completed a second static test fire of its rocket 3.1 orbital launch vehicle. And that means it's now ready to take uh, for a trip to Alaska where it's it'll hopefully make its first trip to orbit from spaceport Kodiak. Astra originally uh, started out as a company with the specific goal of answering the, uh, the Dopper launch challenge, which asked companies to create a launch vehicle that could orbit within a few weeks of each other, originally from separate launch sites, but then later uh, only from separate pads at the same port. The challenge expired without Astra claiming the prize after the 3.0 version of the rocket failed to launch orbit, uh, sorry, failed to, failed to reach orbit. Wow. Um, yeah, it looks uh, like I could build one of them in my backyard. <laughs> yeah. Except for the, the feds will come and get you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Mm. absolutely. Yeah. Let me finish reading this real quick. The company has developed, tested, and flown three successive generations of rocket, mostly without uh, much in the way of uh, public fanfare or information sharing. The startup builds its uh, small rockets, which measure only 40 feet tall in Almedia, California at their own factory. In an interview with TechCrunch ahead of, the, and ahead of their DARPA uh, challenge attempt, Astra CEO and founder Chris Kemp explained that their approach is focused on rapid at scale manufacturing and potential failure margins that might be higher than the existing launch companies tolerate. A kind of mass market delivery system uh, approach definitely has advantages and Astra has focused on a large large system that's much more profitable than others for deployment almost anywhere in the world. The company is also focused on small payloads, which it can deliver responsibly. So a loss uh, a loss of such a spacecraft wouldn't be nearly as expensive as say a rocket failing or losing a large uh, geosynchronous GPS satellite. Rocket 3.1 sounds like a relatively minor iteration of on rocket 3.0 versus the large uh, large four point updates of prior generations. Asher says it's currently headed to Kodiak and that, and that the company is now, working to finalize a launch window with a date to be confirmed early next week for that uh, next big test. So 40 feet is not that much. Um, It's really not that much. And especially if you compare the scale right here uh, to the rocket. Um, 
if this is if this if this is successful, then you're talking about um, you can uh, launch multiple rockets from multiple pads on the same court, probably all at the same time. Yeah, you just have to make sure that the collision of the because you you also realize that if everybody starts shooting rockets up there, it's going to be kind of crowded up there with all these little devices floating around. I think Tesla or one of them want to put in like 60,000 uh, devices up there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it could be kind of crowded up there. Well, it is what it is, man. Um, <laughs> even the projects was pretty crowded too, man. Nobody really complained then. <laughs> the projects, you went there. Yeah, man. Oh. Uh, I, I didn't know you had projects in Boston, man. We used to. Uh, we don't have many more. Uh, yeah, we, we still got them. Yeah, they knocked out all the... Well, they don't call them projects anymore. call them condos in, uh, in, in the uh, seaport area, but... <laughs> condos? <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. Yeah, white 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 people living on top of each other are considered condos, but uh, black people living on top of each other is considered projects. So, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Next item on the docket is from Engadget. NASA delays James Webb Space Telescope launch until October 2021. We just got finished talking about this. NASA has announced a new target launch date for the James Webb uh, James Webb Space Telescope after it was delayed yet again due to the coronavirus pandemic and some technical challenges. The agency moved the target date from March 2021 to October October 31st, 2021, based on recently complete scheduled risk assessment of the remaining integration and test activities. Of course, it remains to be seen whether the Hubble uh, successor will actually be blasting off to outer space by October next year. James Webb was originally scheduled for a 2018 launch, which got moved to May 2020, and then again to May uh, to March 2021. Due to its complex construction, needs a series needs in a series of technical issues. It wasn't until April this year that NASA was able to put its enormous mirror to the test for the first time. There is also the discontinued uncertainty around the pandemic, which could still cause further delays. The telescope is being built to replace the, uh, the Hubble, which has long outlived its lifespan. It, what, it has longer wavelength uh, coverage uh, than the Hubble and has greatly improved sensitivity, giving it the power to detect light from the first galaxies that form after the Big Bang. The telescope can also be used to observe the atmospheres of nearby exoplanets to look for signs of hab habitability. The James Webb team still has to complete a set of extremely uh, difficult uh, environmental tests before the observatory can be shipped to its launch site in uh, Kourou, uh, French Guyana, uh, Guiana. If everything goes well and the pandemic doesn't cause any uh, cause additional issues, the telescope will be folded uh, origami style for shipment and will be fitted uh, inside its launch vehicle early next year. This is, um, you know, the, I mean, this is really something from what I've seen. Um, um, what uh, when we first started doing these live streams, this James Webb Telescope, um, these black people were working on it, black women and black men. Um, what from what I know. Um, this is supposed to be leaps and bounds better than the uh, Hubble, right? The Hubble right now can see, you know, very drastic things, right? Uh, really out there things. But now you're talking about, um, you know, you're talking about uh, seeing into seeing the, uh, beyond the first bang, right? I mean, at the first bang, this is crazy, right? This is just crazy stuff. So I don't know if you have anything um, on this uh, Black Torch. Nope, um, astronomy is not my uh, my uh, strong point, <laughs> but I do I do have um, uh, I if they ever talk about remote mining, I'm interested in that. These uh, remote, like the Japan landed the stuff on the astronaut asteroid and started mining. Uh, that is big business. Yeah, Hayabusa. Yeah, yeah, I would. That's what the money's at. 
Yeah, I mean, the money's in this as well. You know, we talked about like these cube based satellites, right? Cube, cube based satellites. Mm-hmm. And the ability to take a, a, um, uh, a Celestron telescope or even, let's say, a, um, a Canon DSLR te- uh, 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 camera lens and, and pop that thing onto a cube based satellite. How, how far can you see into space, into this galaxy at least? With, with a camera like that mounted onto a cube-based satellite, right? I have a friend who has a DSLR Sony. I forget the, 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 the model it is, but he's able to see the moon on a clear night. Really interesting uh, stuff. I mean, with his telescope and lens. And he can see that from the ground. I can't imagine if you put that same thing on a cube-based satellite the size of a lunchbox in space and use that for observatory purposes. There's mm-hmm. a lot of there's a lot of that can come out from that. Oh yeah, well they can. Uh, I'll give an example. Mm-hmm. Um, with more eyes in space, we can see the approaching of uh, meteors and and micro meteors coming towards us. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, remember we just missed the one that uh, what was it? Uh, Three thousand miles from past Earth, because yeah. they didn't even know it until it was right there. So. It's yeah. um, if we have more eyes up there looking, we can see a lot of things. But you and, know, and now you start talking about artificial intelligence, machine learning, cloud computing, right? <laughs> All of these sort of technologies that can be encompassed in that, right? We talked, we, we we covered an article probably about a couple weeks ago that talked about edge computing in this in space. Basically, satellites that have edge-based computing capabilities with AI built into it, where it can do all the processing mm-hmm. uh, from satellites before even pitching it back down to ground stations um, uh, back on the planet. And so that's where we are right now, you know, uh, te- technologically speaking. That that sort of mindset. Yeah, I agree. I'm uh, I'm just looking at it, like I said. Um, I, I wish I could learn everything, but I can't. And I'm one of those guys who read a lot, so I can't. I can't do every a lot of these things. But certain things I'm really interested in. It, you know. Yeah, I'll go to that cube satellite after we're finished with this uh, last piece. Okay. Uh, this is from TechCrunch.com. Space sector investment shows signs of strength in Q2 despite COVID-19 pandemic. We've been talking about this. One in every three startups. One in every four startups are going to be a space startup after 2020. We, we've been talking about this for the last couple of years. The most recent quarterly report from specialist investor Space Capital shows that despite obvious impacts stemming from the current coronavirus pandemic, investment in general in space startups didn't suffer as much as some predicted and interest surged specifically in the applications category they track, which monitors companies building software on the data layer enabled by in-space observation and communication assets. Space Capital's Q2 report did not, uh, sorry, did report an 85% decline quarter over quarter versus Q1 in terms of infrastructure investment, which is a clear sign that investors have been wary of spending on big expensive new companies actually building and launching space hardware. We saw the result of some of the retraction or some of that retraction with mergers and bankruptcies including the high-profile bankruptcy and subsequent sale of satellite constellation operator OneWeb. I think the British bought that. The good news on the software layer is that the quarter saw $5.3 billion invested in these companies, including $4.5 billion in the U.S., uh, according to the report. And venture capitalist funding overall is actually up 4% year over year for H1 2020. Um, versus H1 2019, the firm notes. Though Q2 investment taken on its own is down 23% year over year relative to Q2 2019. On the whole, the space sector saw $12.1 billion in equity based investments to date in 2020 across 112 rounds with early stage investments totaling 303 million of that 303 million dollars of that across 67 rounds the bulk of those were either seed or series a investments it's worth noting that the applications layer as 
tracked by space capital conclude or includes is essentially any company that relies heavily on GPS and PNT based navigation for their software, including large companies like Waymo that need that data to make their self-driving technology work. GPS is unquestionably one of the largest and most successful space-based infrastructure investments that continue to bear considerable fruit in terms of new, uh, new business uh, new businesses being built in legacy industries continue to be updated and disrupted. Many in space, uh, many in space investment are seeking to a successor to uh, GPS, not necessarily in terms of specific function, but definitely in terms of space-based technology that has that has as broad and lasting impact. You can read the full report from Space Capital uh, below. So, yeah, this is um. Something that we have been talking about for the last couple of years that um, space startups, one in every four, one in every three startups will be a space startup going forward post-2020, regardless of the pandemic. And, and these numbers show it. it a pandemic is not going to slow this down. Um, you're still going to have people being able to write software, people being able to use uh, AutoCAD and um, other sort of um, computer-aided computer drafting systems um, to, to mark up, you know, satellite design. Uh, they can spin all this stuff up really quickly and 3D print it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the other area is the one that I'm uh, looking at, which I like, is genetic uh, gene therapy and things like that, uh, molecular medicine, things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a big one because especially now, we don't know when the next pandemic is going to be or how it's going to affect us. So, you know, it it's could a be lot. Around for all we know. Oh, it, the way China is spitting them out, it looks like it's like a, you ever see baseball and you got those those guys in the uh, batting, the, in the batting, um, in the bullpen. Yep. Looks like China got two new ones ready for us. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. crazy, though, you know. Um, well, we have another pandemic on our hands, which is poverty. <laughs> that could be... Well, it, it that could devastate the whole entire country if it keeps going like this. Well, uh, they made a decision already. I thought the decision was made that they're gonna, we're we're gonna go. They're gonna let people go back to work and the bodies will fall. You know, mm -hmm. I, I thought that was the decision that was made. And I mean, it, you know. It's, I don't know too many companies that are willing to jump on board or something like that. Um, no, they won't say it out loud. They won't say it out loud, but I think it's they they know the bottom. They gotta they know that they gotta get their factories and their products back in mm -hmm. up and working. Yep. So it's sad, but that's what it is. Anything for a dollar. We got DE Raptor on the panel. Hey, what's up, DE? I, I sent you some stuff. Uh, shalom, shalom, shalom. How you hey, guys shalom. doing? All right, how you doing? Good, good, good. Hey, um, oh shoot, let me turn off my phone. <laughs> yeah, I got the stuff from you, Black Torch. Yeah. Oh, they, I, I, I sent it to the, I think I sent it to the whole group about, there's a new study about the immunity. It, it may last uh, 17 years, that's what they're saying now, but I, I, I'm just, I, that report is fresh off the presses, so, you know. Oh, I haven't seen that one yet, but uh, what engaged me about what you sent me, uh, Perk Mays, this was the Kentucky Fried Chicken. Uh, oh, yeah, we, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we, <laughs> we covered that. I, uh, we covered that uh, today with uh, Mike and, and Nicole. It's, um, yeah, I, I, I'm just, you know, it's, if I'm a, Star Trek fan, this is the first step in building a food replicator. But, you know, uh, uh, I'm also knowing that the, the, all the problems you're going to have with that. So, yeah. Uh, okay. Anyway, uh, there's something about this, uh, the, the, the previous article. Yeah. I don't know if we can go back to that one. Uh, mm -hmm. About this new telescope. Yep. Hey, we have not yet seen half of the universe. I don't know how these people are talking about how the universe is 13 billion years old, but the the more the 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 more um that they see each time they, they create another 
telescope that looks into a different part of the spectrum. They're expanding the knowledge of the universe and say, oops, we made an error. Uh, we think now that it's, it's even older. It's even bigger. It's more complicated. You know, the laws on this part of the universe seem to be different to that part. Of, and that's what's going to continue to happen. It, it, it's when we it's like looking trying to look over the horizon when, when man was standing on on, on on the earth looking out over the ocean and said, oh man the earth looked like if you go to that far you're going to fall off and then when they got to the horizon you can look back and see the land and you can see another island in the distance holy crap something's wrong here so what are you doing the universe is just like that and, and, and they already have laws already shows that time and space is curved. And we are looking at the horizon with the telescope that we got and say, instead of saying, you know what, this is how far we can see. They're telling us, you know, that's how far it is. You can't go any further than that. And we are not learning from, the, you know, like, like, like the past. <laughs> you see people, the people still talk about how the earth is flat, you know, we are going out there saying the universe is flat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, well, we got that, a whole group of people are saying that the Earth is flat. <laughs> we got well, a whole group even of today, them. yeah, even today, you got people saying the Earth is flat. You know what I'm saying? And 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 we got people who are saying the universe is flat too. That's basically what it's saying. We are looking at the universe, and as far as we can see, you know, that's it. No curves. <laughs> De, you know we we still haven't gone to the bottoms of the oceans to figure out what's going on in this planet. So I don't I don't know what you know, and we haven't even figured out how we work. So you know I I think the 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 greatest mystery for us is one is how we work, and then the place that we live on. <laughs> but you know. I just I just amazed when I I I see these articles and they say oh yeah. The the um the black hole blinked. That was the latest one. Did you see that one? Yeah, <laughs> I was like saying, who's writing these things? <laughs> no, it, it me I, when I look at those things, I just have to laugh because it's like they say, okay, you got a hole in the universe that sucks in everything. How much water can you put in a one a one gallon bottle before it overflows? You know what I'm saying? And when you start. Uh, I'm not gonna go there because you know it's not a it's a lot we're not talking about that subject no. But anyway, the cube sat that you guys are talking about, that's that's a magnificent idea. We we talked about this a lot before. Because those cube sats can look at the universe in every spectrum. You program one to look at the universe in the in, in magnetism is a in the magnetic spectrum program another one to look at in the low frequency you know spectrum where voice where you listening to sound where we can hear sound in our ear and then you you got the the vhf spectrum and the hs spectrum elf spectrum if you program these things to look each one looking at a different spectrum in the universe there's so much more that they'll see and then you black cars are talking about mining and and last, what was it? I think it was Saturday or Friday. We were talking about that. And, and, uh, we were talking about how Elon Musk, he's building electric cars here. But I think his his whole his whole master plan is have this super corporation that that is going to 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 do everything in technology, including going out to space. He is like almost like an explorer. He is. He is like the people who will get on a ship in, in 1300 or 1200 and go as far as they can to see what's out there. And that's what he's doing. But in the meantime, he's creating a corporation that is going to be at the forefront of technology. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, I think the purpose of Tesla is really to just license out intellectual property uh, to other companies. Um, I don't think that worked too well for him. Uh, at least not at this moment. But let me jump to this um, from NASA's website, nasa.gov. 
CubeSat one-on-one, basic concepts and processes for first-time CubeSat developers, okay? This is a CubeSat. This is, look how big it is. Um, it's about uh, four inches by four inches. So, um, and it comes in a variety of formats. It can be stackable and things like that. So that's why you see in this first picture, you see uh, solar panel, uh, I guess the solar, um, yeah, the solar panels on there are pretty uh, slim in size. And uh, it's actually shaped like a wine, like a wine bottle stack or something like that. Let me uh, scroll down. All right, let me just go over the introduction real quick. Uh, how do you start a CubeSat project? As popular as CubeSats have become, it's surprising how little information is out there to help someone just entering the field. That's why this document was created to lay out everything you need to take a great CubeSat idea and make it into an actual spacecraft that is launched into orbit. If you've been involved in the CubeSat world for a while, this guide will be a good reference for anything on which you might need a refresher. However, this guide is written for first-time CubeSat developers and especially for CubeSats being developed at educational institutions. So if this is your first foray into CubeSats, you'll want to read through carefully to get an idea of the scope and the amount of work this project will require. Before we get into the nitty gritty, let's start with a little, ba little background. CubeSats began as a collaborative effort in 1999 between uh, Jordi uh, Puig Sori, Sori, a professor at California Polytechnic State University, Cal Poly, and Bob Twiggs, a professor, professor at Stanford University Space Systems Development Laboratory, SSDL. The original intent for the project was to provide affordable access to space for the university science community. And it has successfully done so. Thanks to CubeSats, many major universities now have a space program. But it's not just big universities, small universities, high schools, middle schools, and elementary schools have also been able to start uh, CubeSat programs of their own. It's government agencies and commercial groups around the world have developed CubeSats. They recognize the, that the small standardized platform of the CubeSat can help reduce the cost of technical developments and scientific investigations. This lowered uh, barrier to entry has greatly increased access to space, uh, leading to an exper exponential growth in the popularity of CubeSats since their inception. In addition, the world of small affordable spacecraft has gotten more diverse and complicated each year as more and more researchers find utility in these small packages. The document was created mainly for CubeSat developers who are working with NASA's CubeSat launch initiative, CSLI, but more chapters will uh, more chapters also will be useful uh, to CubeSat developers launching through other organizations. So this is a CubeSat in space. Okay, um, looks like uh, Montana State University uh, launched this one uh, in an illustration, but shows the uh, the device uh, in scale to the uh, to the uh, lower Earth orbit. So. I'm just going to scroll down on all this and show you the electronics and um, design itself. Um, again, there's a, there's a site called DigiKey um, that guys in the electronic community uh, are very familiar with. I've been familiar with them for uh, well, yeah. well over 20 years because uh, I, I, I have a, a background in computer electronics myself. I went to a vocational school before I even went to college. And so that's, what, um, that's how I got in, in, involved in this type of stuff. Um, in terms of hands-on work and soldering and surface mount work, rework and stuff like that. That's how I got involved. Uh, mm. You gonna say something? Uh, no, I was just I was just uh, listening. I just want. Do they? Uh, okay, you launch these things, these small satellites, how in low orbit? So how long do they stay up there? Maybe a uh, a year or two. Or it more? depends on how much um, energy is left in it. Um, that thing, from what I understand, um, they can stay up there to up to five years. Oh, okay. Yeah, if they're positioned right. And it depends on what the, the application is, right? If it's just using it for tracking weather, um, that, you know, that's not a big task, right? Um, it, 
especially if you if you're just looking at let's say um if you're Venezuela or something like that, you needed a cheap base satellite to throw up there, it probably went well within your budget and to replace it um, every five years than to actually build this massive big satellite that's that's going to cost you billions of dollars or I should say millions of dollars. This is Yeah, but are you saying that these things have like, they can adjust, like they have propulsion units? That's yep. what you're saying? Yep. Oh, okay. I didn't know. I thought yeah. I thought they would just they launched them up there, and they basically just had a particular elliptical or orbit that they occurred, and then when they run out. But now you're saying that they. So what are they using? Ionic propulsion um, to keep them up there? I don't know exactly what the what the what the uh, engine is, but we we covered this probably over a year ago, but. The engine I know, but I wasn't, I wasn't no, with I, the group. I understand that. I'm saying, I'm just saying it for the people to listen. Mm -hmm. The engine itself is the most expensive part. All the other shelf, all the other components you can buy off the shelf at Micro Center or even DigiKey or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it's, the, it's, that, it's that engine. Um, I think it costs like maybe 50 bands just to get one of those. Um, and it's, and, it, and it, it has just enough thrust just to move it around ever so slightly. Mm. It's pretty interesting stuff. It's pretty interesting. We covered this um, quite some time ago, so I can't remember, really remember the name uh, of it, but um, there's a site uh, of a company, I think out in Europe, that actually does it, um, that actually builds the engines for it. Um, and you can attach it to it as a part of the design. I think they'll actually help you with the design as well. Uh, and so the, you know, one U dimension, three U dimension, these are sort of terms that we use in like uh, racks in, uh, in the data center, but, mm -hmm. 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 11 centimeters. This is a common design. Um, something like this could potentially be used for 5G internet development um, in lower earth orbit. And so there's a variety of applications that it could be used for weather tracking, you know, GPS, um, GLONASS, um, you know, um, go ahead. No, you can use it for also um, um, geographic censoring for crop development, yeah. Yeah. Uh, all kinds of things. You know, you want to make sure your tractors are going in the right rows and things like that. But it, it's interesting um, these little um, these little things uh, that they're putting up there. Uh, De, I had a question for you. Um, uh, so. Uh, you should get, since you know the guidance stuff, you should get into a building the, the guidance for these things. <laughs> is he still there? Yeah, I think he's on mute. Yeah, um, yeah the thing is, um, like the original open state statement said, this has opened up new academic space, pro um, space programs in not just big universities, but all the way down to the middle school, high school level. So when mm -hmm. we start talking about Black people, oh, well, well, how, you know, we, we need to be, you know, we need to uh, send our kids to these good schools. And well, we have the opportunity now to download, <laughs> to download all this stuff from NASA and create our own space program so that your 12, 13, 14, 15 year olds can actually get involved in this area so that they're not being left behind like they were the last generation, Generation X. And so, exactly. um, well, all we need is a make and a lot of these communities a make shop. Yeah, make a lab. Yeah, and we could do a lot of, of things that it will, and and on I there was a a little thirteen year old boy in um, in Nigeria, and he was building all transformers, all kinds of things. Yeah, Not the one that they gave an MIT scholarship. They gave him there's another one building things. He he's like eleven years old. He knows soldering. He knows all that. He's building all kinds of things. And, and with, with and all he got his information from the internet. Yep, yep, that's the power of it. And um, a lot of people aren't taking this stuff very seriously, um, maybe because they don't know. Um, but you know, this document here, man, you can't go wrong with this. This is the Bible. Mm. This is everything you need to know to get involved in this type of stuff. We've uh, we've gone over a different document that's very similar for NASA, but they kind of just give out the blueprint so you can print it. A lot of the parts, the physical parts and stuff could be bought from Home Depot. Are um, you going to put this in the chat so people yeah. can see it? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to go okay. in. I'm just going yeah. through it um, before we uh, 
before you close no. off. But the thing is, go ahead, DE Rapper. You guys said, um, like, I started off like you, seriously. <laughs> I, I was, I was my third year of, uh, I wanted to be a, C, a CPA. And uh, I was working in an office doing taxes, and the smoke in that office was killing me. So I went back to school, back to what I was doing in, when I was in the military. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to technical school and started, um, you know, soldering and, you know, doing all that, all that stuff and, and breaking down electronics to see what's in there, you know, radios, trans, trans, everything. But mm -hmm. anyway, um, Every school, every school today in the black community should have a program like that. Yeah. Serious. It doesn't take much. I mean, it costs so little to do this thing that is a shame. Mm -hmm. Seriously. <laughs> and Mike was talking about this, this, the company that he deals with that you can buy anything electronic on there. It's yeah. Cheap. Digi-key. Yeah. Yeah, I they'll send you a the catalog. Stuff used, the stuff that I use used to come from, uh, what do you call it, Shop. Uh, Radio Shack. It Radio don't Shack. Exi it don't yeah. exist anymore. I was crying when they went out of business. Uh, Man, it, that hurt me when they went out of business. Yeah. So, th I mean, I, when, when I, uh, this kind of thing I don't like to talk about because it frustrates me. Little black kids should have all these little opportunities. Even if, and, and, and in the garage at home, you can build this stuff. Mm -hmm. In your garage, man. Just like people were building computers in the 70s, little kids can be bu building CubeSats and cars, experimenting with cars. Mm -hmm. You know, everything that you need is there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the site DigiKey. Um, embedded computers, uh, integrated con circuits, uh, LED, opti optical electronics, uh, RF wireless, I mean, everything that you could think of electronic is on this site, including Raspberry Pis, and which is what you would use inside of a um, inside of a um, cube-based satellite. And so this oh, is they're using Raspberry Pis. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cost effective. I yeah. mean, that's the bare minimum, right? That's like Raspberry Pi would be the bare minimum, but you can buy. Uh, you know, uh, single board computers and stuff like that to, to fit in there if you have the right design. Um, mm. But this is this is where we are. You know, um, look, uh, make it do your do it yourself. Um, educational kids, let's click on that. Yeah, these are um, yeah, these yeah. are educational kids that uh, you can buy. I, this is how I grew up, okay? Radio Shack used to have these 25 in one um, educational kits that you can buy, electronic uh, educational kits. And I used to get one every Christmas, man. I, that used to take me a whole year just to uh, dabble through. Yeah. There used to be a company called Heathcliff before yep. that you can build a whole computer. Yep. Um, and that's how people built the computer before uh, uh, PCs came along. Yep. yep. Heath kit. Uh, that, the first one, the first computer they had was a Heath kit. And you can go in there and, and wire it out. So, oh, man. Every, every, oh, shoot. Now you bring back memories, bro. <laughs> well, every, remember, oh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a scientific historian. That's what I do is for fun. Mm -hmm. yep, so I, 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 I go back. I can, rem like, uh, I went to the, um, uh, the cryptography museum at the uh, at, at the um, in Columbia, uh, Maryland, and that was something else, man. You see the Enigma machine, you see all kinds of things. So I'm I, I'm I'm a junkie for science and you know history combined. Yep. The fir the first one of the my own. Uh, you remember Hafler? Hafler Ooh. used to make a Hafler. There's a company called Hafler that they used to put out uh, power amps that DJs used to use. Okay. I built one of those. I built the 220 myself just by buying the parts and building. 
Mm -hmm. So well, well, remember, the, the, remember those um those things were replaced with transistors and all those other things in the vacuum tubes, and now the high end things are going back to using vacuum tubes. It's crazy. Oh, oh yeah, it, it, tube, I think vacuum tubes that's got uh, ICs inside. Yeah, no. the uh, Macintosh is the brand. The the receiver costs like seven, eight thousand dollars. Yep. You can put up a wall now, and I see walls that cost fifty thousand. Fifty thousand people that 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 specialize in this thing come up and put up a, a, a music wall, and you have your own private room. What they call start calling man cave now. That these things cost a lot of money, man. Oh yeah. So there's a market for it, but we're not in that market. Well, the only company that still makes vinyl records is in Brooklyn. I went and visited. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, because it's only you go and tell it like you you want you want to say you got a a file and you got a whole album from a digital. They will make the album for you. Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, I think that's fascinating. I really do. Technology is it first they they, they kind of like moved away from that and now it's moving back towards it but in the digital scale instead of the the the, 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 the you know having an own meter you can hook all this stuff up to your computer and see how it works. Mm -hmm. Well, the, are you a short radio? Do you have a ham operating license? Does anybody have? I, yeah, I do. Yeah, because I mean, the way I, you I, sound, it sounds like I you have, had a hand. I have <laughs> not only that operating license, I got a radio station operating license. I got my FCC license. Oh, okay. So you know Morse code. I forgot it from the military. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, the, the thing is, um, you start talking like that to black people, a, a ham radio, you mean a ham sandwich? You know. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, we're not going to go there because you know. Uh, that's the one thing I hate when they say black people don't read. It's not true. No, no, no. There, there's a low literacy rate amongst our people. This is very true. I okay, know, I but the thing about that. it, I, I, but the thing about it, okay. There's a percentage of I, I don't know if you know about my background, but I was, I was basically exiled from my, from my, from my family, uh, except for my mother, but the rest of them, you know, because I, I, I was a what they call the, a. a, a I know it all because I, I read everything. So, you know, they basically exiled me. So I, 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 that's how I think, you know, I think that we need to, like I said, I say it before, we need to science our way out of the problems we having. And the only way we're going to do that is by, um, is by getting together Math should be the basic language that we should be dealing with. You know, that's my, that's what I think, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, somebody I you at that point, bro, because that, that was like, in my, when I was going to school, math was the, 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 I don't know. It was like beauty to me. I'm serious. When I when I start doing math, it was like, oh man, beautiful. Electronics to me is I begin to think like a computer when I'm doing electronics. Yep. So and 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 and, and that's what I'm. You know, I, it's it's one thing that we I I commend you guys. You know for letting me on the panels and things like that. Um, because I, I thought that I was alone, <laughs> you know, because you go to these things and sometimes you're the only black person there or, you know, or, or somebody from Africa or someplace like that. And, you know, you try to relate to them and they look at you like you, you got horns in your head. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, it's been a fight. That's all. And I, I, I'm just trying to say if we could get together and it's it's just uh, I mean the, like you said uh Mike and the, it don't cost that much but the problem is they don't want to put the time in they rather have discussions about how to chase women how to do all these other things instead of putting the time in where it 
we're not going to be able to defeat this the, this thing without science and math and it, it's chasing women it's just a distraction mm-hmm. you know? well, one but, thing when you say that is like this manosphere is the ideal what would i call it now incubator for us because it allows all of us from no matter where we are in the country whether you have a lot of money or if you are just a little kid with you know a little laptop at home that you can sit down and listen to people who you never think exist speak their mind tell you facts you know and learn things that you didn't think you can learn but well, we don't do it i mean we we never it seems like we are so busy trying to separate ourselves from one another that, that it, 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 it hurts sometimes for me to listen to some people talk. Man. Oh. You know what? I want to say this very quickly. Um, there are people out here that say that, you know, if you're talking about math and you're trying to get into math and stuff like that, you, 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 you're being like racist. You know, you know your mathematics is, is, is racism. I've heard that said here in the manosphere as well. I, I, I'm, I'm, see, that's why I can't. I can't deal with those people. I really can't. I, I, I mean, some of the profound ignorance that, 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 that we run into, it's, it's profound. But I've heard that. I've, I've, I've heard that here in the manosphere. I know, I know Mike's heard it. I know, I know he's heard it. And, uh, you know, Max, this kind of stuff is, is racist. And, and, and these people call themselves conscious or whatever. Well, I, 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 this racist. is the ideal place, like I said, for uh, like an incubator. But it seems like I'm not against people using this space to make money because it should be. You should be making as much money as you can in this space because that's what it was created to do. Well, no, well, not created to do, but what the the, the visionaries who created didn't create it to do this. No, but, uh, remember, <laughs> YouTube was bought by Google. Google saw the the thing the the, the opportunity here, but. The the thing that Google didn't realize what it was what it did, and and with this YouTube, it was able to be a universal school that you can learn anything. It didn't matter where you are on the planet. You can see if you want to fix a car, just a guy video of a guy fixing that car, timing that engine, uh, soldering. There's uh, so many. So uh, like Mike was saying that you can just put this thing in the thing and said, oh, you want to learn how to solder? And you have a group of little kids and you say, here, you all get an iron, a soldering iron and and we'll look at the video and then we'll each show, and then you'll each have your thing to do soldering. I mean, it, like you said, it doesn't cost much, but you know what it is that like I said, they don't want to give up their time. And their time is, is, is to me, is precious because you don't know when somebody is going to tap you on your shoulder and you're out of here. So, you know, I, I don't I don't know what to say, you know. Yeah. But the other thing is that somebody might see you. Somebody will hear you. You might come on this platform and Mike or Nagone or somebody will hear you talking. You, you will ask a question. You say, you know, okay, bro, when we get off, I'll talk to you. I'll mentor you. And 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 that's the way it's supposed to be. Not us getting into fights over this. You know, I am. You know what? I'm not even gonna go there. But I'm just. No, gonna, no, 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 we don't, we don't have to go there. No, we don't have to go there. The thing is, I, um, I think certain things need to be said about that, Mike. I, I, you know, Mike. I know. I, I know what you do behind the scenes. I, I see the. I see the. I see. I see the role that you play behind the scenes on, on, on in many different areas. Holly Butterley. What D said is right. You know, I got one young. You know, young brother at least. I have a couple who who I talk with. I got this one young brother in particular who, you know, I met right up through here, he hit me up. And next thing you know, he got his, he got his Python uh, uh, assert. He's getting ready to go for the next one. Um, he didn't get it the first time he was doing it on his own and nobody was following him, nobody was mentoring him. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't get it. But he got it when he hooked up with me and said, man, you know something, like, oh, I wouldn't have done it without you. Now, you know, he's moving on to some other areas and he's moving on he's not worried. He's not, he's not talking about women. He's not worried about all that, but that's not important to him. He's he's on his, his his mission. He's on his game. That's the only reason why I fuck with this channel. I, you know, this other stuff these guys are talking about and talking crazy and talking outside of their their asses and talking insane, walking up saying stupid things, very ignorant on on, on facts and so forth. 
who really has time to deal with that? I mean, we try to deal with that, but it's frustrating to have to deal with these people. Um, but but it's kind of a game we, we're going to have to play because over here, we're doing things a little bit differently. They're not 500 people in the chat room all day long. And you're over here talking about this, that, and the third, and talking about who's doing this and who's going out with this and who's who, who's who, who, who's who's macking this hole or whatever. We're, we're not into that. that that's not going to get to the, those huge numbers. But what's important to me are the ones and twos guys that are getting their, let's say they're getting their CDL. Let's say they're getting their... Um, their, their, their programming certifications. Um, let's see, they're getting their A plus, their A plus search and, these, and, and this type of stuff. That's what means a lot more to me now because that's what I do in, 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 in private life, with tutoring and so forth. I'm, I'm into that. That's what, fit, that's what fits more down, more down my line than anything else. I got, grand, I got a grandson, you know, I got a son. You know, I see what it is out here for, 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 for us. Very important that we have to mentor and roll with our, with our younger black men out here. Cause man, we got nobody looking out for these guys. Got nobody else looking out for them. And I listen mm -hmm. to this crazy stuff going on online here. This crazy shit I hear people talking madness, but, but yet, <laughs> we, we, I mean, talking madness, talk, talking like they, like their heads are on backwards. But what DE is saying and black torch is guys saying it's right on the fucking money. We, that's why we're here, man. We got to address that consistently. This is serious business. And whether people don't like it or not, I don't give a fuck what you think. Fuck y'all. At the end of the day, it's about making this thing happen for us. And, and, and it's going to take a certain level of intelligence. Yes, math skills and other type of skills are, are, are going to be important. And we got, we got to be pressing. We got to be pressing that. Anybody who thinks it, anybody who's running counter current to that, I, 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 I got nothing for you. Yeah, I'm helping. Uh, I have like three people one is Google. He's getting his Google service thing. One guy is doing the um, AWS um, uh, practical, and then he's going to do the the um, uh, what is it? The uh, solutions architect. And then uh, uh, I'm helping another guy uh, just get his CISSP. So it's uh, you know I tell people you can it, it just you know. It's funny. Um, I didn't know them. They reached out to me because uh, family told, "Oh, speak to the, speak to him, and he'll help you." So that's the way it's been. You know, um, it's been like a, a a secret that only you know people who know people who know people. So I'm just trying to say, I hope that we can bring this to a, a greater audience, and maybe that kid that who was like me, who was a who was exiled to the library every day uh, he can have somebody he can talk to. Yeah. Yeah, I think we'll close it out here. Um, thank you all for joining us. Please hit the like button if you've not already done so and share the video if possible and hit that notification bell so you get all the updates from the Black Brain Trust from those posts on our community tab. Uh, thank you to Nicole Ali for uh, stopping through as usual and um, shalom everyone.